And for people that, as it is a new show, not many people know a lot about it yet. Yeah. Can you just introduce us to it? And what, obviously, your character and how you the evolution of it? Sure. Well, it's, uh, it's the brainchild of David Jenkins, a New York playwright. And the idea is that it's about a support group for people who feel that they've been abducted by aliens. And we gradually learn um, that this is, you know, their way of making sense of a lot of disappointments and weird delusional episodes in their life. But actually it's true. And there are aliens and they have been abducted. Uh, and then, you know, as it goes forwards, the aliens are kind of meddling in their lives in ways that they don't really understand and um, are trying to make sense of. And uh, maybe one day they will. What can you tell us about uh, your character, Gina? So Gina is a pretty badly credentialed therapist um, who isn't that good at what she does, who runs this support group and, um, and tries to offer solace and some insight to people who, to her, you know, she's also been abducted, she's an experiencer herself, and so, um, you know, just trying to gently and lovingly help people through a really tough, tough situation that a lot of people give, you know, they don't, they don't have a lot of places they could go. So this is a, a comforting space. It's super relatable. I mean, everybody's been abducted. Yeah, at some or point everyone's been in a group. Alien. Yeah. Everyone has been in a group. Maybe for some people. So or maybe not. <laughs> so how how quickly will we see the aliens? Now? Do we do we know? What they look like and things like that? Uh, yes. Well, yes. Um, uh, Anna's character hypnotizes uh, Wyatt's character in the pilot, and we do see what he thinks he sees. Uh, but he's been also having certain waking uh, nightmares, and uh, so it's you know it could be the result of like. Uh, some kind of mental illness, or they don't 100% know it's aliens, but we do see what he thinks he sees in the pilot. And then as the series uh, progresses, you get to see more and more of, of what they're up to. So how did you get involved? Um, well, I read the script and thought it was hilarious, and um, Conan is producing it, Conan Orion, and uh, he's an old friend, and he's the head of his company's an old friend, and, Wyatt used to work with me on King of the Hill, and um, so by the time it all came together, I just felt like this is a really exciting concept, plus a lot of really exciting people, and um, so I wanted to get involved, and I ended up directing the pilot and producing it with, uh, with Conan. Will you be writing in any of the episodes? Well, I feel like my, my, uh, I'm probably more going to be just kind of throwing in suggestions and giving notes and stuff. And, uh, we have a nice staff of um, six or seven great writers, and uh, so you know, I'm hoping I'll contribute by tossing my two cents in. How hands on is Conan? Conan's a great inspiration, and his sense of humor is, you know, kind of permeates stuff through his company, and his uh, executives of his company are. Very, uh, very present, and um, you know he's a big fan of the script and what we've done so far. So uh, you know, he probably won't be making smoothies on set, but I, I think he's going to have a lot of fun. I hope so too. Would be a nice thing just to sort of show that he's one of us. It's definitely scripted, but um, at least I can speak to the, the the pilot. You know, Greg's expertise has obviously found comedy and finding things and letting people run with them. So there's a lot there, and it's a very gifted improvisational uh, cast. I mean, they're people from the improv world. They're, they're very, very funny. So there is some improv, and, and I think um, the intention is to do even more. Uh, we're loosening the shooting style a little bit. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the thing is that it's very arced out, and we're going to know the scripts for all ten episodes in advance. So the challenge for them to improvise is to make sure that they don't like take it in a, in a direction that we, we can't get to later. And right. Just instead, add like in, in the same spirit of scene, with, you know, extra humor. But it's strong. There's a strong sense of story there, and obviously a drama. And it, it is very much a mash genre show because it's very sci-fi focused and so it has this kind of grounded office comedy but it also has an office style comedy but a lot of sci-fi intrigue. Um, who's the funniest when the camera's hair falling? <laughs> That's 
Who's the funniest when they're the rolling? Aren't rolling? When they aren't rolling? Obviously um, me. Yeah. <laughs> You can say something else. It's okay. I'm supportive. Maybe Conan. I'm back a team. Back in, back in LA. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. Wait, how far, how far along are, are you in production at this point? We're shooting. We just began. Uh, so we shot the pilot last year, yeah. and then um, we've all been in Toronto, and now Tuesday. Starting start Tuesday. Tuesday. We're starting the second and third episode. Yeah. And then the writing has happened. It's all. We're in the last week of writing, and. Um, <laughs> What is the atmosphere like on set? Like, is it is everyone laughing? Is everyone trying to one up each other? Is yes, one, is it's a very fun, very positive. It's fun because it's a big cast. I think anyone who does a lot of improv loves the sense of a big ensemble because there's lots of energy and lots of people to play with. And if you burn out in one direction, you can kind of you know you don't have to carry the ball all the time. It's, it's nice. So it's a very fun, very kind, uh, convivial group, which is really nice. We we just did the panel and. Conan very you know, eloquently was saying, which is true, like a lot of us have been working for a while and it's nice to do it with people who are also human beings and not and, and are kind of interested in doing something fun together. Yeah, and the, the subject matter, because it's a genre mashup, the, there's a lot of places to go. Yeah. Uh, you can be funny in the situation with character comedy, you can suddenly turn it and show the the more vulnerable side of a character and that's still good too because it's interesting and then you can try and blow people's minds with you know uh, like a sort of a, a sci-fi thought that they hadn't necessarily considered like um, the, the, uh, the character that Oscar Nunez plays is uh, a priest and um, it, he's a priest at the, at the church where they, the group meets in the basement and um, you know we were constantly sort of making uh, comparisons between his faith and the faith of a lot of the people in the group. This thing happened to them, and, you know, and he's, it's sort of troubling to him that they seem to, to have this faith. So, you know, this is another area that you can just kind of go to when you're, when you're acting to, to, to go to something interesting. And I think it's fun for them because they got a lot of different interesting places to go with their and it's still in, it's sort of in the here and now. It feels very grounded and real at the same time. You know, you as a comedian, obviously, but how are you with the sci-fi element of the show? Well, I'm, a, a, as a fan, excited. I'm really interested in it. Um, I don't, I, I mean, I'm playing a real person who's experienced extraordinary things, so in some ways that's not really all that, I mean, that's just an acting. That's How do you cool. make your tongue turn into a snake and come out of your mouth? That's a really cool that thing to do. That is genetic, and that's just something that my family has had, and I always thought of it more like probably why I went into comedy because I was embarrassed by it. Fundamental. Yeah. But yeah, as a fan, I'm excited. I mean, I'm geeking out to be a Comic Con. I'm having, I came in a day early. My husband and I have been out seeing, seeing panels. He's like texting me from the various booths that he's at buying art and stuff. So um, I, it's funny, I don't know about Greg, but I, I actually don't watch that many comedies. I'll sort of take, if I have a friend on something, I'll watch it because I'll feel guilty and I'm having dinner with them or something and I have to tell them they were good in it. And I enjoy them when I, I mean, but it's always shamefully late. Like, like after yes. it's in syndication, I'll be like, you know, Frasier's pretty funny. Like, you know, just like, right. oh, it's like really late. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, you know, if you work in comedy, I know, it's like, just right? like, most of the people that I know that are in comedy, they're big Game of Thrones fans. Exactly. And, yeah. Uh, so we watch all of that. We watch, yeah. you know, Walking Dead, Fear of Walking Dead, you know, um, we have a lot of guilty pleasures, and so that, a lot of that's here at Comic Con. Exactly. So will there be a. Uh, Flashbacks and <laughs> yeah, the, the episodes are a lot of the episodes in the first season explore the origin stories of the experience because it's a big cast and big. Yeah. And like, there's a great uh, episode, our fourth episode. Uh, you know, you, you you see the ship and you see um, the aliens and the stuff that you've previously only seen when Wyatt's been hypnotized. And then suddenly it reveals that now Gina, um, Anna's character, is you know, is is uh, strapped to the gurney up there, yeah. and then it just dissolves to what she's up to with her, with her job at the crockery hutch. Um, and you know, suddenly you're like, oh, yeah, that happened to her too. My yeah. God, what yeah. you know? So how much CG is involved in like green screen and stuff like that? What's the 
Well, the goal of the, the, the way we're doing the sci-fi is to be as practical as possible. And um, there, there's a little CG, but it's, it's what they call CG enhancement, where we, we have uh, costumes and prosthetics, and then the CG is added just to put a little bit of moistness to the costume or, you know. We also do it in the non-alien sections, just so we look at My boobs are slightly higher, and my cheekbones are a little more sculpted. <laughs> throughout. And um, the action obviously then gets away from the face, but it also is a story about the story. It's yeah. like how much of the story is there and how yeah. much is out. Is, is it a balance? Or it's largely out, I would say. <laughs> right? yeah. yeah, I think so too. I mean, I think that the, the support so, group scenes are, uh, there's at least one yeah. per episode. So this is sort of the home base where everybody yeah. gets to see each other in person, but then they break up and they follow the different characters on their days and stuff like that and sometimes they'll have like little field trips that Gina you know will have arranged uh, that brings them outside of the, the basement and how many total episodes for the first season ten and how would you define the is it very the office is it very Oh, what do you think? I mean, I think it's behavioral character comedy, so it's sort of like, you know, you have to get to know who the characters are, and then how they're behaving is really funny, and their choices that they're making, um, more so than, like, set-up, set-up jokes, set-up, set-up jokes. Definitely. But it's not, it's not a mockumentary. It doesn't have that style to it so much. It doesn't have the, the, the pausiness, I would say. Um, it's, it's definitely a single-camera comedy that's happening in a very filmic way, in terms of something. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So it does, I would say there's some similar, but only because Greg is a ma a very ma he's masterful at that. Well, we talked about um, we talked about Cohen Brothers a lot on uh, doing the, the pilot, and um, you know they're very funny in uh, filmic ways. And uh, you know my hope was to try and use the camera to tell jokes sometimes. Mm. Or, not all be uh, verbal, and um, you know, and, I, and one of the things that attracted me to it was that when David wrote it, he put in his pitch document that it's sort of a combination of a of a Greg Daniels comedy. And I was like, ooh, somebody, somebody name checked me! Yay! So excited! <laughs> yeah. uh, I have a genre, guys. <laughs> yeah, with uh, with like uh, JJ Abrams uh, Magic Box show. Like yeah. lost, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool because you know, um, it does feel that way to me. Yeah, having seen the pilot, and there was something that we did for a, for a magazine where um, Damon Lindelof uh, wrote a, a proposal for an episode of The Office, and I wrote a proposal for an episode of Lost, and we kind of switched uh, switched genres. That's and, and like, yeah, I forget what it was like, Us magazine a few years ago or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so I was like, oh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Kind of intrigued. It's challenging, you know. It's Again, being here at Comic-Con, like, you go out as a comedy star, as a writer or whatever. Like, I, I listened yesterday to Brian Fuller, and, you know, it's it, it just fascinating to hear really serious, dramatic writers processes because it informs how you work as a comedian too. It's not that different. And how did you get attached to the show? How did you get attached to the show? I should say. Were you approached? Did you have to? I was approached, which was really. I was super psyched. It was in an alley. She was on her way home every night. Some groceries. And yeah. It was very. I was. The big, they tried to make it real, so they did this big light, and then it was just Greg with a kind of a creepy flashlight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just. I, it's, these are great people have the good fortune to work with, so that was easy. And can you name drop some of the people that you you enjoy sparring with in the cast when you're... I like them all. I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, Oscar is really delightful, and, it, and also a groundling. I was in the groundlings as well. So I think there's a common language, and, and Husky is hilarious, and Nancy, Nancy Lanahan is hilarious, and Teresa Chimo. They're, they're great. They're really um, sharp, funny, generous which, actors. Which of the characters' backstories were you most interested to, to, to find out about? That's a great question. Um, kind of all of them, because honestly... Uh, Divine. Divine Joy Randolph. Um, she's a postal worker. She, yeah, and she's got a... She's got the most sort of skeptical attitude of all, and the idea that she is also um, a believer in this. Yeah. And it makes me very curious as to how yeah. she got there. Yeah. And Ennis. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it seems the farmer. Like I mean, it's sort of a it's, it's a it's a it's a tough luck group, you know. So. So as you're seeing this thing, this post worker farmer, I, I immediately think of like a man in black. Whether they're just kind of inside, you have to. Yeah. Um, well, Men in Black was is definitely uh, something in the genre. Right? Definitely. I mean, the interesting thing is the tone, because a lot of times when you mix comedy with sci-fi, it gets very broad. And what this, what I think is unique about this project is that the comedy is very realistic and grounded, and there is sci-fi. And to me, that. That makes the sci-fi, in a sense, almost more compelling because you, you, the characters are freaked out by it and they're taking it very seriously. And um, you know, and I always appreciate comedy that is is grounded and, and it makes all the silly moments more fun. I think because you know you don't go there all the time. And, um, you're going to get taken away, but one thing I feel like I should ask, do you believe there is life out there? Definitely. Not even a question. I mean, it seems so insane that there wouldn't be to me. Even just from a logic standpoint, I don't know if they're like green Martians or... I certainly don't think we're smarter than anybody. I mean, I think there's... It's big. It's a big old universe. Why would we be the only ones in it? Yeah, also, if you look at the history of, of the progress of science, it's always been to take us from a position of uniqueness and put us further and further away from the center of, of what matters in the world. You know, whether it's like, oh, the universe spins around the Earth. Oh, well, actually, no, it doesn't. We're spinning around the sun. Right. Well, actually, you know, the sun is really kind of a small star, I mean, you know, among, like, endless stars. I mean, just the, the odds are that, that there's life out there and that they would be big fans of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I should hope so. In a comedy, at least. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.